and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Amen. We may need some more adults up here to help oversee the children just to stand by their pew, their row. Please, if you would, uh, teachers, junior church workers, let's stand our attention, please, young people. Stand up and we're going to bow our heads, close our eyes and pray. Be less distracted that way. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We're looking forward to the program next week. We know you're putting a lot of time into planning it, and preparing it, practicing it. We are inviting family and friends to come see the real meaning of Christmas here in the house of the Lord. May God help us to do all the inviting and making people feel welcome when they do come. I see some folks sitting there in the, near in the back. If you'd stand up, you'll be, feel better sitting later. Unless you're handicapped, let's stand up in honor of the Lord. We do this in unity to show our unity in prayer. And even though you're not saying the prayer out loud, you should be saying it quietly to God, not to me or not to yourself, but we're actually talking to God as we begin the service. We want him to be the special invited guest and that we're all paying attention to him. Okay, let's bow our heads together and pray. I'll lead you as we pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for another Sunday, another day of freedom. Another day to be in the United States of America. We do thank you for our government and for our politicians that have gotten us this far in freedom. We pray for their need of a Savior, those who aren't saved. We're supposed to pray for those in leadership. We think of our, our mayor here in Medford and our representatives in Congress, the senators that worked even late last night and maybe still working today to try to create a budget with the money and the needs of people. And we again pray for wisdom for them, and now we pray for ourselves that you might prepare our hearts to concentrate on the songs, to, that everybody would want to sing them. There's some here today that are sad and depressed. That By singing, that would take away some of their sadness and depression. The Bible says that we're supposed to lift up our voices. It is a command that we should regularly lift up our voices together and rejoice in your goodness and we know that our troubles may not automatically go away but if we seek your will that will help us to know you serve you love you and obey you help us each to do our best today if there's anyone here that's never been saved and uh, has doubted their salvation that today uh, you'd replace those doubts with faith take away the fear of tomorrow and give us the confidence that we can know and do your will in this service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. May be seated. We'll sing another song together. If you don't have a songbook, just hold up your hand. Somebody will come we'll try to give you a songbook. Adults, help the children with the songbook if you would, please. Oh, yeah, she has it right there. Amen. 421, please, the songbook. If you turn to 421, I'm sorry, 422, 422. Don't mind me. Thou 
Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home there was found no room for thy holy nativity. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Heaven's arches rang when the angels sang, proclaiming the royal decree. But of lowly birth didst thou come to earth in thy great humility. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. The foxes found words their nest in the shade of the forest tree. But thy couch was the sod, O thou Son of God, in the deserts of Galilee. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Thou Camest, O Lord, with the living word that should set thy people free. But with mocking scorn and with crown of thorn, they bore thee to Calvary. O come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. When the heavens shall ring and the angels sing at thy coming to victory, let thy voice call me home, saying, Yet there is room, there is room at my side for thee. My heart shall rejoice, Lord Jesus, when thou comest and callest for me. in Psalm number 51. If you don't have a Bible, hold up your hand. We want you to see the verses as we read them. Psalm 51. Men are helping get the Bibles distributed. If you don't have a Bible, you should be asking your parents to get you a Bible for Christmas. We have Bibles here on the back table. Some are free, some are a dollar, some are twenty dollars, depending on the quality of the Bible. We have some other things on the table in the back that would make nice Christmas gifts. Again, we want everybody to find Psalm 51. It's right about the middle of your Bible. Psalm 51, it's in the middle of your Bible. If you're going to have a happy Christmas, a Merry Christmas, you're going to have to do what this chapter tells us to do, to have a clean heart. Psalm 51. I've asked Brother K.O. to come lead us reading it responsively he'll read the first verse we'll join him every other verse in reading it out loud then he'll lead us in prayer psalm number 51 I need some help here on the front row guys they still haven't found it anybody else you haven't found it we want to help you hold up your hand we'll help you find it josh here's a guy still looking on this side still trying to find it psalm 51 again if you don't know how to read yet Again, it won't help you to look at it, but concentrate on the words. Let's stand together, Psalm number 51. Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blood of my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Why not? For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, Behold, thou, thou desirest, desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the, the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. 
Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make, Make me to hear joy, joy and, and gladness, gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. rejoice. Hide, hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, heart O God, God, and, and renew, renew a right spirit within, within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore, Restore unto me the joy of thy, thy salvation, salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, God, thou God of my salvation, and my, my tongue shall sing out loud of thy, thy righteousness. righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall, shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem and to all together. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness with burnt offering and whole burnt offering, burnt offering, then shall they, they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Uh, let's bow our head in, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this uh, beautiful day that we can come uh, into your house and worship you. Uh, thank you for being so good to us. Uh, thank you for allowing us to get through another week. And uh, we come now to, sort, uh, to uh, get some strength from your word. And um, I, pr I thank you for each one that coming today. Um, Lord, we come to, uh, to, uh, to worship you and honor you and uh, to come to, uh, uh, to be blessed, to be strengthened, to be encouraging to one another. God, I pray you speak to us today. Uh, meet with us. And again, just uh, um, continue to work in our life and help us to, uh, to get rid of any sins, anything that are hindered our walk with you. And I pray you make it clear. And the Holy Spirit, may you continue to, con continue, continue to convict. We love you. Thank you for being so good to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 May be seen. We are receiving some uh, food boxes from uh, the Rotary Club for distribution. If you are in need of food for Thanksgiving, please let us know that. We have a list. We still have a few boxes left. If you know somebody that could be a help, a blessing to them, let us know that as well. Either see Josh or myself. Uh, we do want to distribute those this Thursday. They'll be here by noon on Thursday, Thursday of this noon. And don't forget, next Sunday, as we've already mentioned, the children will be presenting the Christmas carol at the 1030 service, a great opportunity to invite your neighbors. They'd be more likely to come if you'd have them over to your house, perhaps after the service for lunch or to... Uh, do something else special, coffee or tea in the afternoon or in the morning. And then for New Year's Eve, remember, we will be having our regular Wednesday night service here in lieu of a sermon, a preaching sermon. We're going to be watching the Time Changer film. It has a great message, a biblical truth that we all need to be reminded of. That will be on Wednesday, New Year's Eve at 7 p.m. There will be a high social as well as games beginning at 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Then the option for those who want to stay home or I mean go home or stay later to play some games and fellowship both of those options will be available for those who can come on New Year's Eve don't miss an opportunity to be with God's people on a regular Wednesday night for Christmas Eve as well special service planned here for Christmas Eve at 7 p.m. and then our regular Christmas caroling on 6:30 Tuesday night the next two Tuesday nights we will be doing Christmas caroling We'll be going into Boston this Tuesday, 6.30. The following Tuesday, we are invited to a nursing home on the 23rd of December to a nursing home here in Stoneham. Please be in, uh, involved in these activities, especially with the children. It gives them a great opportunity to encourage others by singing the Christmas carols and playing musical instruments. Those of you who have musical instruments, that would go real well this Tuesday down at the Common. If you can join us there with your musical instruments, It'll be a great time of testimony and witness for those who pass through there. Okay, the men are coming with the offering plates. This is how we worship the Lord. This is part of the worship is our giving back to him. I trust you've all had some kind of uh, income this week. 
if you haven't uh, pray that it'll come in next week and uh, if you haven't been working if you need to work let me know that we know of people that are looking for employment or I'm looking to employ people let us help you in that way if we can and of course we want to use this time to pray for our missionaries many of them will be lonely over the holidays your prayer your email may be a great encouragement those of you who do email remember that's an inexpensive way uh, to be in touch with the missionaries I don't know if Facebook goes around the world or not but uh, some of you know all of that be a nice way to say hello to the missionaries their addresses are on the, the letters on the bulletin board down front and we really need to assign that so that not everybody reaches one missionary and we forget some of the others so let's be in prayer about how we can be an encouragement to those who are away from home who'd like to be home uh, for Christmas and are doing that as a ministry for Christ and of course Noah's standing in the place of prayer certainly praying for their son to be born soon uh, and that Melissa will have extra strength is she in here or is she downstairs uh, we're all praying for Melissa she's heavy with child maybe we'll have a Christmas baby <laughs> But they're certainly praying it'll come before Christmas, right? Uh, so we'll follow you as you pray, leading us, if you would, please. So clear. Thank you, ladies. 392, we'll sing a song. Christmas season, good time to tell people about Jesus. 392 in the songbook. Let's stand together as we sing. 392. to be a soul winner for Jesus every day he does so much for me 
I want to aid the lost sinner to leave his erring way and be from bondage free. A soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus, oh let me be each day. A soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus, he's done so much for me. I want to be a soul winner and bring the lost to Christ that they his grace may know. I want to live for Christ ever and do his blessed will because he loves me so. A soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus, oh let me be each day. A soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus, he done so much for me. I want to be a soul winner till Jesus calls for me to lay my burdens down. I want to hear him say, servant you've gathered many sheaves, receive a starry crown. A soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus, oh let me be each day. A soul winner for Jesus, a soul winner for Jesus, he's done so much for me. Amen. Please be seated for some special music. tell there's something special about to happen and that's the birthday of a king 
again some 2,000 plus years since that birth, that special birth. We're all affected by it one way or another. You're either going to heaven or hell when this is over. And if we're hoping you're going to heaven. The pastor is known as a shepherd. And I'm concerned about health. Any good shepherd of sheep would be concerned about the health of his flock of sheep. Your pastor, of course, is concerned about your spiritual health. Physical, second, spiritual, first. Most important part. But if you're not physically well, you're going to have a hard time enjoying spiritual health as well either or or so turn with me to psalm number 14 psalm number 14 your pastor and his wife and family of course the church members uh, we want you to have a a healthy christmas a happy christmas and of course uh, preparation for the new year comes real quickly thereafter psalm number 14 reminds us of a universal fact and that is that we've all sinned psalm number 14 we start with the sin and then we deal with the sin Psalm number 14, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. That's the biggest sinner of all. God calls him a fool. And that's not our prerogative to do so, but we can quote God. You meet an atheist, you meet somebody that you say, well, Merry Christmas, and they say back to you, bah, humbug. Uh, And we can say, well, I feel sorry for you today, my friend. I hope you'll change your mind because God calls you a, a fool. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good, God says. That's from God's perspective. And so we meet a lot of people in that category at this time of the year. A lot of people get depressed and are discouraged this time of the year. And so we need to go around and try to lift their spirits. Let's not make them more mad at us or God, but let's be truthful with them. And let's ask them, well, may I share a few thoughts with you from the Bible? And you might even show them this verse or something similar in the New Testament. The Lord took down from heaven, verse 2 says, upon the children of man. You say, where is heaven? It's up, according to that verse. God looked down. The Lord took down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. And here from God's perspective, it says, they are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. What a description of our society. Let's not dwell on the fact that we live in a world of filthy people. And the person sitting there where you're sitting, right in your spot, is included in that category because we've all sinned. Before we throw any stones at the unbelievers or the backslider, we better remember that the Bible says we've all sinned. We've all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. You say, well, Pastor, I thought you were trying to cheer me up for Christmas. Well, we'll get there later, but let's look at the facts, look at the reality. If we're going to have a Merry Christmas, number one, we have to admit we've all sinned. And God is grieved by our sins, but he's never surprised by our sins. He knows the beginning from the end. We can't surprise God. He knows we're sinners. Number two, all continue to sin. Isn't that encouraging? All continue to sin, both the saved and the lost. Continue to sin. That's reality. We wish it weren't, but that's reality. But we're not belittling sin for the believer, folks. We don't have any reason to sin. We better quit making excuses for our sinful behavior and not belittle it and see the seriousness of it, For especially for saved people. Lost people, they're on the broad road to hell already. And they're going to end up in hell if they don't change their mind. But we have the privilege of trying to persuade them, to convince them to change their mind. And a a smile and a Merry Christmas surprises some people. I haven't had anybody really smile at me and say Merry Christmas apart from in here. And I don't even remember anybody did that. Of course, I have a short memory. And I'm not looking for somebody to cheer me up. I'm looking to try to cheer somebody else up with a Merry Christmas. God bless you. Good to have visitors here. Thank you. I did get some cards, and Moe was the one that sent me the first card, or his wife. I don't know. I didn't probe him to see which one it was. And we're not looking for Christmas cards necessarily. We're looking for passing on the good news. Yes, we're surrounded by a world of filthy, ungodly sinners, and they're going to continue to sin. And we are too if we're not careful. We are too. As, uh, even as God's people, we're going to continue in sin if we're not careful. Number three, God is a father, though, of discipline. See if you can find Hebrews chapter 12 in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 12. We don't want to belittle this fact that we are sinners and we're going to continue to sin because there's a God in heaven who wants to be our father, and he's a good father. Pick it up in verse 5. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 5 says, And he, ye have forgotten the exhortation. It's possible for Christians to forget, which speaketh unto you as unto children. 
My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. If you're going to be a child of God, you need to expect you're going to be rebuked by your Father in heaven. You're going to be chastened, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Don't be discouraged if God rebukes you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you're one of God's children, you're going to get some chastening along the way. You're going to get some attention getters to try to get you back on target. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. That is, if you're sinning, you need to expect God to chasten you. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all, this is referring to saved people, all saved people, all Christians are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. If you're not getting any chastisement, you claim you're saved and you're living in known sin, then you're not a child of God. You're an illegitimate born. You're still a lost, according to that verse, according to the easiest explanation of that. And that is a very strong word there that uh, our Bible uses. And, of course, those that are rewriting the Bible, they would take a strong word out like that, and they would change it. I'm not sure what they changed it to, but uh, bastard is a biblical word. And if you're say if you're claiming to be saved and you're not reading your bible you're not praying you're not consistent in going to church then you and the holy spirit doesn't tell you that that's not what he wants for you then and that furthermore verse 9 here's the the practical application we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they are earthly fathers, for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So God wants us to have a Merry Christmas. He wants us to have a holy celebration of his birthday. He's a father of discipline. And again, we are here today, we're looking out and wondering how healthy are you spiritually? How healthy are you spiritually? I'm concerned about the celebration of Jesus' birthday. You need to be clean to enjoy the thought of his birthday and how to celebrate his birthday, not our birthday, not what gifts we're going to get or what we're going to give, but how our, our relationship with him. Now, we talked about sins. Sins incur uh, a, a consequence, and some sins incur or uh, imply or bring about a greater consequence than others look back with me in proverbs now that's right after psalms the book of proverbs chapter 5 some sins incur a greater consequence than others proverbs chapter 5 and this is the time of the year as we said that some people get very lonely they get depressed their family may have disintegrated uh, they may have lost friends you may be tempted to go back to the old way of life to to be included in the Christmas party, the celebrations of the world, uh, the employment, I'm going to be hosting a party for you perhaps, and you have to decide, do I go, do I not go, do I drink, do I not drink? Let me encourage you, please don't be drinking the alcohol. It, it destroys your body cells. It destroys your ability to think clearly. Uh, you don't have to have alcohol to have fun at a party. If you're a Christian, you have the joy of the Lord in your heart. And the world doesn't have that, so they have to have some outside influence to cause them to be so-called, quote, happy and to have a Merry Christmas. But like I say, stay away from that. Now, the gift that most people don't want, I heard on a survey, is they don't want hard liquor as a gift for their Christmas. So don't be buying and giving hard liquor. You shouldn't be selling it. You shouldn't be giving it away, and you shouldn't be receiving. You say, what do I do if somebody wants to give me uh, some liquor for my Christmas present well uh, you've got two choices you could say well thank you I know you meant well I don't use liquor but I'll be glad to accept it this year uh, and be assured that I'm not going to give it away I'm going to take it home and, and uh, uh, run it down the drain I was going to say flush it down the toilet but uh, that may help you know clean out the system a little better uh, and you'd want to do that kindly you don't want to unnecessarily be uh, unkind about it but just say I, I could give it I could refuse it but then I'd take the chance you'd go give it to somebody else and then you'd be guilty of that as well because he's giving it to you you want to let him know you think it's uh, detrimental to drink alcohol 
It causes accidents on the highways. It causes uh, 20 to 30,000 people die every year just because of drinking and driving. But ladies and gentlemen, there's another cause for a lot of accidents, and it's these items here. And again, as your pastor, I am concerned about your physical health and your well-being. These devices are causing all kinds of accidents on the road. So don't be tempted to pick this thing up and be looking at it or dialing numbers or taking numbers. Pull over to the side if you think it's an emergency call. Don't take a chance of an accident by using this thing behind the wheel of an automobile. It's dangerous. Uh, thank you uh, for that uh, sign of approval. I saw all of you nodding your head. Yes, I agree, Pastor. We should not be using the phone. Uh, if you can get one of these holders to hold it on the dash and you can push the button, like the old uh, radios, the push-button radios, that may be a safer way to do it. But don't try to be using it while you're driving. Proverbs chapter 5. Some sins incur a greater consequence than others. You only have to mess up once behind the wheel to kill somebody. It could be you, or were, and maybe worse yet, you're saved, you're going to get to go to heaven, but if you kill somebody unsaved and you live through it, it's going to be a very difficult thing for you to accept. If you kill somebody, even accidentally, it's going to be difficult for us to accept. And that's why we better take our driving license and our driving privileges very responsibly because some sins incur a greater a greater consequence than others. For example, Proverbs 5, verse 20. Proverbs 5, verse 20. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? And many times this thing of being ravished has to do with being intoxicated. Some women and men get intoxicated and they do unnatural things that they wouldn't do if they were still sober. But be careful. Be careful, men and women. For the, the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. And so today, what are we saying? We live under a God of, uh, that uh, agrees we've all sinned. We agree we've all sinned, and we agree that all that are saved even continue in sin, whether you're saved or lost. We don't want to belittle sin. We want to recognize it and know how to deal with it. Slip over to chapter 6. And here's where our families are falling apart in our society. Even Christian families are falling apart, young people. Single people are rejecting by God's laws of, of getting married. They're living together first and then thinking, well, we'll pray about getting married later. No, that's not the way we do it as Christians. We maintain our sexual purity until after we're married. And then we get married for death until death do us part. Proverbs 6.23, pick up the seriousness of sin. Lust not after her beauty. This is the strange woman. Be careful of strange women. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. We're not just talking about physically the woman on the street or where you work. We're talking about the one that comes through these devices if you aren't careful to have a, a screen on it or some kind of a safety projection. You don't want to lust after beautiful women. They are uh, being warned, or we're being warned here. Don't let her take you with her eyelids. She's going to have some false eyelids, chances are, or some paint to try to get your attention. Verse 26, For by means of a whorish woman... A man is brought to a piece of bread. What's a whorish woman? It's the same as a whorish man. She is and he is promoting sexual activity outside of the holy bond of matrimony, of marriage. They're whore men. They're whore women. They are out to have pleasure apart from biblical truth. And God says if you're saved, you're going to be chastened for that behavior. Let's continue on. Can a man take fire? Verse 26, For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. There it's putting the, uh, putting the emphasis on the woman. The adulteress will hunt for the precious life. There are women out there hunting for men that want to have sexual immorality with them. Verse 27, Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? That's, an answer, that's a question we can answer with a yes or a no. Let me read it again. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Yes or no? No. Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? Answer it with me. No. So he that goeth in his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. 
Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry, but if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own. Say it. You want to destroy your own soul? Some sins have a worse consequence than others. Pornography is a sin. Looking at other people's wives or daughters is sinful behavior. Women looking at other people's other men's body is sinful behavior. Women are lusting after men's bodies as well. If you can't control what you're looking at and bring it under control, God says you're going to destroy your own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Remember, some sins have a, incur a greater consequence than others. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. And one author has rightly said that it is every man's battle, and it's most women's battle, this thing of what we allow our eyes to see and our physical bodies to do. God, however, does forgive sinners. He forgives lost sinners and he forgives saved sinners if they meet the criteria of repentance and faith. And so that's where we want to end up today. Point number four, God will, God's will is to recover and return to a fruitful life. If you have sinned, if you're living in secret sin, and you've not confessed it and forsaken it, it's God's will for us to enjoy Christmas, to recover and return to a fruitful life as God's children. Now go with me to Psalm 51. Psalm number 51. It's not God's will that we linger in sinful behavior or live there or stay there, whatever the sin is. Psalm number 51 is the story of David's testimony. David had lived in sin as a saved man. He's a type of a saved man. Had the, the testimony of the New Testament says he was a man after God's own heart. So it's possible for sinners and saints to sin after they're saved. And God, though, will forgive if there is a full acknowledgement of that sin given. This is David's full acknowledgement of his sin. He's crying out as a saved man. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. This is not the prayer of an unsaved man. This is the prayer of a saved man. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. You will not have a Merry Christmas if your sin is not forgiven. You're going to be struggling. You're going to be doubting, discouraged, depressed. You must get forgiveness of your sins and that's where David is taking us. He committed not only the sin of adultery, he committed the sin of murder. And then he lied about it for six or eight months. A baby was born. And there's people today here in this auditorium listening to us on the air that have committed sins that's never been repented of. And today would be the day if you want to have a Merry Christmas, if you want Jesus to be really happy with your life, you better come clean. I better come clean and stay clean if I expect to have God's full blessing on my life. You can't cover your sins. We'll see that later. David here is acknowledging his sin. Because his sin is ever before him. He's struggling with carrying the burden of his sins. Against thee and thee only have I sinned, David says. And done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Two sinners get together, and another sinner is born. That's the fact of life. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, everybody born since then have been born sinners. It's not that the relationship of a husband and wife is sin. It's the, it's the product of the relationship that becomes sin. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Here again, David's crying for mercy. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. We think a lot about snow in this coming uh, time of the year. Make me to hear joy and gladness. If you're living in unconfessed sin, there's not a lot of joy or gladness in your life. You can act it out a while, but if it's not real, if you're not clean with God, you need to pray this prayer if you want to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. 
Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities, David says. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Remember, he's not praying to be saved. He's already saved. He's praying now for the right spirit to be renewed in him. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He's not going to take your salvation, but you're not going to enjoy the intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit if you have unconfessed sins. Restore unto me, he says, verse 12, the joy of thy salvation. He's not praying to get saved again. He's praying for the restoration of that salvation which he already had. Christians can sin. Don't be surprised if you hear somebody confess as a Christian they've sinned. Be quick to forgive. And be quick to say, if you've not sinned, thank you, Lord, for giving me victory. And praying for each other that we would have victory. And that we would have the humility to pray this kind of a prayer. Here's the title of my message. Do you need a then in your life? Do you need a then in your life? Here it is. Verse number 13. There's the then that we are asking you whether you need. As the shepherd looks over the flock. Do you need a then in your life? David prayed, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. If you're not concerned about lost people, then this then is for you. Because David says here, I'm burdened about my sins. I'm pleading for you to clean me up again. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Transgressors is another word for sinners. Once you get clean, once I'm clean, then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be what? Converted. Are we concerned about sinners needing to be converted unto thee? Save sinners, lost sinners. Everybody sins. But everybody needs forgiveness of their sins. And remember, some sins incur a greater consequence than others. God forgives sinners, but he wants forgiven sinners to recover and to return to a fruitful life that involves a full acknowledgement of my sin a full acknowledgement deliver me from blood guiltiness verse 14 says O God thou God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness as we look out over here as song leader brother Cody and as I sit here some of you don't seem to be singing this way some of you seem to be maybe still last night maybe you're burdened down about the load of your sins but here's the command that we are to lift up our tongue and with our tongue we're to sing aloud of thy righteousness we're not singing just to be heard we're singing for God's glory that he might hear and be thankful that we've opened our lips verse 15 O Lord open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise do you have that desire today if not I'm suggesting you need a then in your life you need a then in, their, in your spiritual health to come back to its uh, full, uh, full health, full uh, uh, authority, that you would be singing and praising God like this. Verse 16, you say, well, pastor, I put my money in the offering. Well, the Bible says here, thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. And so today, if you have sin in your life, and we're thinking about Christmas in 11 days, here's the formula for getting healthy spiritually. God's not going to despise your broken and contrite heart. He will forgive you. Verse 18, Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. So we're saying today, we mostly uh, think about uh, uh, making excuses, blaming someone else. No, let's get the excuses, the blame out of the way. Let's look at Proverbs 28, 13. See what the wisest man in the Bible referred to other than Jesus. Proverbs 28, 13. This subject of how to have a merry Christmas. He that, over, he that covereth his sins, Proverbs 28, 13, shall not prosper. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth, that is, you agree with God. That's step one. This kind of repentance we're talking about is a two-part. A statement equals your confession. I'm a sinner. I'm a saved sinner or I'm a lost sinner. 
And then if you're a saved sinner, you get this confession, you make this confession, yes, I'm continuing in my sin. That's not repentance. That's not true biblical repentance. True biblical repentance involves an action. It involves not only confessing it, but involves forsaking it. Confession is step one. Confess your sin. Step two, then, forsake them. Forsake the sin. Then you shall have mercy. Then you'll have a Merry Christmas. Then uh, you'll have some joy in your heart that you'll want to sing and pray. Then you'll want to read the Bible tomorrow and today so that you can be wise enough to avoid sin when it does come knocking at your door. And be assured it will come knocking. Whatever age you are, wherever you live, Satan knows how to find you. He knows your address. He knows your weakness. And God's Holy Spirit wants to be there to help you recognize and confess and forsake your sin when it does Remove sadness. Remorse and sadness is not repentance. Uh, sometimes people are remorse and sad just because they got caught. Humiliation is not repentance. Yes, you, enter, you could uh, hurt your family name by your sinful behavior. Open confession is not enough. I must confess and then I must forsake in a biblical godly way as we saw David in this chapter. I need to name it. I need to call it what it is. I need to call it what God calls it. You say, well, I'm not involved in the physical activity, but I am enjoying a little pleasure in looking at these strange women. And you don't have to do it on the Internet. They're everywhere else as well. And you want to be careful how you control what you see and what you think about. You say, well, if I could only win the lottery, if I could only get a free ticket to Las Vegas, pull the right lever, get the right number, I could be a happy Christian. One of the Ten Commandments, the last one is, says, Thou shalt not covet. Be careful at this time of the year. You know, the television, the advertising media wants to sell you this, that, everything. Be careful you're not lusting after that which you don't need. You know, people have to rent storage space because they have more junk than they can keep in their house. The garage is full, the attic's full, the basement's full. So now, where's the closest uh, uh, storage rental facility? And they keep building these all over because people are accumulating junk. And the question is, what are you going to do with it when God calls you home? Be part of the solution. Become accountable. Some of the best kept secrets are sins that need to be confessed and forsaken. We hear of all these abortions going on in our world today. How many of you have ever heard anybody can confess that they had an abortion? You say, well, preacher, that's personal. You're right, it is personal. But the question is, can you hide that sin? David couldn't hide his sin. David had to deal with his sin publicly. Are we trying to humiliate anybody or hurt you? No. Every woman that's had an abortion has a man that's just as guilty as the woman is for having a part in that immorality that caused somebody to want to kill the preborn baby. May God help us to see that confessing and forsaking sins is what brings cleansing. It brings the renewal, the freshness that a believer needs to be a part of the solution. Drugs, alcohol, these are all false substitutes that drive people that are feeling convicted, they're feeling dirty, they're feeling condemned because they've never openly confessed their sins. They've never become accountable to somebody else that can help get them to the next step of their process. Some turn to uh, excessive use of coffee, sugar, soda, food becomes a substitute for that drawing of God's Holy Spirit that wants to bring us to the Holy Spirit to give us the, the, the real solution to our problem, where we can start anew. We can get relief from our past and start new, as David did, a man after God's own heart. You must not waste the future. Souls are still lost. The gospel has the power to save and to give us victory over our sins of the past saved and lost people you say well I'd get saved but I'm afraid my family wouldn't like it well you better be thinking about what God wants for you instead of your family you're making your family God instead of the God of the Bible your God may the Lord help us to see that tonight somebody was congratulating Charles Spurgeon in the latter days of his ministry he was greatly used of God to see multitudes of people saved and he was very careful not to take any of the credit he gave God the glory by this illustration he says the gospel is like a caged lion. If you let that lion out of the cage, that lion will do its work. It'll 
mutilate and destroy anything it chooses to. It gets in its path, especially if it's hungry, unless there's a Daniel praying. Unless there's a Christian praying, the gospel has the power to do its work. If we can get it out of the pages of this book, if we can get it outside the walls of this building, if we can get it outside the secret in chambers of our heart, the Lion of Judah, that's a, rela that's a relationship of Jesus, that's a, a, a title for Jesus. If Jesus and the Holy Spirit could get out of the cage, let us get out of the way and let the Spirit and the power of God do its work. It involves the birth of an infant. It involves this perfect 33 years without sin. It involves the crucifixion of that Savior, Jesus, at age 33 and a half years of age with his mother and some of the disciples looking on, some from a far distance. My God, help us today to see that God wants to use us, but he wants clean vessels to be used and to be effective and to have the privilege of being available during this season to get out there where the public is, to get out there where the hurting ones are, to get out there where the unsaved people uh, uh, struggle with life and struggle with the desire to, to believe something. And that something is what changed our life. If you're saved today, you know the power of the Lion of Judah. You know the power of God's Holy Spirit convincing you that this book is true and that we don't need a newer version. What do you say? Well, what do I do if somebody gives me a new version of the Bible? They know I'm a Christian. They bring me a new version. Again, you want to say thank you. God bless you. You know I'm a Christian. You know I love the Bible. But it would be a great opportunity to give them a very simple lesson. Not there at the Christmas party. Not there at work. But you'd say, I, I sure like to have a few minutes with you sometime and explain to you why I love the Bible. And then you have an opportunity to tell them, uh, as close as you love the Bible, this is not really the, what you believe is the preserved Word of God, unless it is the King James Bible, and you take a loving position. You say, well, I don't know how to say all that. If you be here tonight, we'll give you lesson number five, how to say that kindly and gently, and how to say it lovingly, because some people have never heard uh, the reason why we think this book is, is the Word of God. And we can hold it here and say without doubt that we believe you preserved this God as a part of the miracle of giving us salvation you've given us the truth that we need to hold on to and to pass it to the next generation why so we can be clean so we can be most effective so we can be most powerful to let the lion do its work and apart from the holy spirit of god combined with the word of god combined with the story of jesus birthday we don't have a hope of getting out of here alive but with that hope we have every promise that we're going to live for eternity in heaven and that we can take people with us can't take things with us, but we can take the souls of people with us. Mostly our family, friends, cohorts, even strangers. There's a fellow sitting in Davis Square yesterday, sitting, on this, uh, sitting right on the sidewalk. I felt sorry for the guy. It was cold out. So say, uh, he didn't even ask for money. He just sitting there. He seemed happy. And I got down beside him, um, showed him the Bible, and guess what? He wanted to have the Jesus of the Bible that we've been singing and praying about here, praying to this morning. He wanted to have him as his Savior. You say, well, what's so big news about that? Well, it took me about 200 tracks to find that one man that was interested. Well, two men. I found another man. He sat down with me on the bench. He was passing by, and he wanted to know the story, the true meaning of Christmas. And that's a good, a good opening, by the way, if you could say to people this time, has anyone ever told you the real meaning of Christmas? Merry Christmas. Has anyone ever really told you the real meaning of Jesus' birthday? And you go right into the fact that we've all sinned. Include yourself. Say, I'm one sinner talking to another sinner. How do you like being called a sinner? How do you like being called a man, that woman, that's not only a sinner today, but you're going to continue to sin as long as you live on this earth? May God help us to see that we've all sinned. And the question is, do you need a then in your life? If you do, David gives you the perfect formula of how to get that then back in your life, how to be clean and strong again, enough uh, caring enough for lost people that you'd want to include them in your Christmas celebration. I have a ministry, of, we as a church have a ministry of sending Bible studies to prisoners. Sometimes I uh, get uh, a little impatient. I send out a Bible lesson, it comes back, 
I never hear from the fellow again. Some people have done as many as eight or ten of them. I have one prisoner that has done the set twice. And I keep thinking, well, he'll be back in church soon. But most of them I never get to see. But this one fellow sent me a Christmas card. It's probably going to be the most meaningful Christmas card I get. Uh, not to belittle the one I just referred to. But this fellow was a prisoner for years. And uh, it's been years since I've heard from him. And the Christmas card came from Ohio, Mansfield, Ohio. I opened it up with excitement. Who is this? I even forgot his last name. And I opened it up, and there he said, Thank you, Pastor, for helping me when I was in prison. I've been out a year now. I'm living with my sister in Ohio. He thought enough of wanting to say thank you to this church. And again, you're paying me a salary. I'm only doing what I should be doing, uh, sending Bible studies out. Uh, usually at least one or two, three men uh, a year. I get to send out the lessons. We've got the, several uh, now that are going out to a fellow right here in the Boston area. Uh, he uh, And I addressed him a, a return Christmas card this morning. That may be the most meaningful Christmas card I send. Because why did he send that to me? He wanted to say thanks for this church ministry, my ministry of trying to encourage him to study the Bible. He's claimed to be a Christian, but he, like David, he sinned. He got caught. He ended up in prison for years. Now he's a free man living with his sister. And he mentioned in the little note that he sent me, uh, I'm living with my sister and her cats and dogs. <laughs> he didn't say he was in church, so guess what? I wrote back saying, I hope you found a good church. If not, let me know. You've got to be in the right kind of church, folks, or you may end up in prison like he did. It happens to save people. It happened to David. You better be reading this book every day and say, God, I need some help today. The temptations are coming in all directions, uh, and I'm weak. Dear God, please, Holy Spirit, help me. I'm going to get up early enough to read the Bible. I'm going to get up early enough to talk to him in prayer and say, Lord, I need you again today. And throughout the day, I'm going to pray to him that he's going to help me to resist the temptations and to have victory so that I can realize that some sins incur a greater consequence and I don't want to get caught in those disgraceful sins that's going to embarrass my family, my name, my church, my friends. God will recover and He wants us to recover. He wants us to return to be a fruitful Christian. That's what Christmas is all about. Do you need a then in your life? If you do, there it is, verse 13, Psalm 51, 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. You thought what we need in America? We need a spiritual revival. And that's how we get one. Let's do it for Jesus. And if you haven't been baptized yet, I did put the warm water on this morning. Remember, we're not doing it every Sunday, but it is warm this morning. We'll do it the first Sunday of January, Lord willing, if I'm still here. If not, uh, let's do it today. Let's do it the first Sunday of January for God's glory. Pray with me, will you? Lord, thank you that we can be saved and baptized. We can be clean if we want to be. If we do like David, confess and forsake our sin. Thank you that you forgave him and used him again. There's nobody in this room needs to have a, a sad Christmas or a lonely Christmas. There's nobody in this room that should have a discouraged Christmas. Everybody in this room should have a merry Christmas for Christ's glory, God's glory. And if there is somebody still struggling with secret hidden sins that they'd want to come clean today like David did, As we give you a few moments to pause, you say, Preacher, I'd be embarrassed. Well, you're among friends. You're among people here that would forgive you. You're among people here that would pray for you. If you would humble yourself and go clean, come clean with God. There's no better place. This is the hospital, the spiritual hospital for sick spiritual people. And remember, we've all sinned as lost people. We've all sinned as saved people. Who are we to throw the first stone? We wouldn't dare. Now, Father, have your will. Apply the preaching, the teaching of your word. Apply it to our hearts. Cause your people to respond, to be clean and filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we would have a desire to see a spiritual revival. Then we'd desire to see family, friends, and neighbors, and even people we don't know. Then we'd have a desire to see them, train, them uh, be saved and baptized and discipled. Then we'd see... You get all the glory you deserve, we pray, be it happening today. How many are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit? The best you know, you're saved and in God's will, the best you know. 
you're ready to do business for God this week, God bless you. That's good. How many would say, Preacher, I need to be cleaned up? And again, you don't need to raise your hand if you're embarrassed, but you need I need to stay clean, and if I'm not clean, to get clean today. As we depart from this place here shortly, may your God, may your will be done in each of our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Three hundred twelve. Let's all stand together as we. <clears throat> Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth Thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false shall disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear Gladly the warm truth everywhere Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. Yes, that's a nice prayer, a nice song to close with. If you have any press questions, problems, don't rush off unless you're on the bus. And even again, if you have a real problem, we'll get you a ride home. Let's be thankful that the buses that were found safely this morning, their first week out of their a regular parking space. Let's be thankful that God worked that out and that it will continue to work in Somerville for us to park there. Thank you, bus drivers. We realize it's a little longer drive, taking a little more of your time. Let's, as a church, be praying for them. be easier for them to get tired and weary, having to drive a few miles more in traffic. If we can help you in any way, bus workers, we saw these three or four rows filled up with children. Most of those were bussed in this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Jesus' birthday, what greater gift could we give than to care for the little children? Parents that don't have cars, don't have the desire to bring them to church, here's a church that does have that desire. Again, thank you, bus workers. Let's remember, Melissa, in closing, uh, in prayer, uh, if you would, Brandon, lift her up in prayer. She must be downstairs. She's heavy with child. Let's pray for her and others today that may be struggling, especially Laura Parks. We're praying for her today that God will heal her her foot and leg situation, if you would, Brandon. 